How do you work out if your investment property is eligible for tax depreciation? Hey everyone, Tuan Duong, founder of Joy Tax Quantity Surveys here for another video designed to help you become a better property investor. So we get a lot of calls from disappointed property investors inquiring about claiming tax depreciation, but are caught off guard because they didn't realize that the property they bought is ineligible for tax depreciation, or there's a chunk of it that they can't claim on tax deductions. The sad truth is it's not even their fault. There have been legislative changes around in claiming tax deductions on property and for the average first home buyer, there's really no way to be across it unless you're aware about it. And even then, 70% of property investors don't even know about tax depreciation with thousands of dollars of tax savings unclaimed every year. A big part of this lack of knowledge revolves around specific dates that we believe every property investor should know. These dates become super important after changes were introduced during the federal budget night on the 9th of May, 2017. So how does this affect property investors? If you've exchanged contracts after 7.30 p.m. on the 9th of May, 2017 for a secondhand residential investment property, you won't be able to claim depreciation on existing plant and equipment assets known as Division 40. This is because these assets are considered to be previously used, but you'll still be able to claim capital works deductions, which are Division 43. These are the permanent fixtures in the building, typically making up between 80 to 90% of your total tax depreciation claim. The other key date you need to know about is the 15th of September, 1987. This is the date that's been set by the ATO that allows you to claim on any capital works if the property commenced building after this date. Confused yet? Well, I'm gonna make it easier for you. Go on and put this video on pause, get a pen and paper ready. We're gonna go through several scenarios to help you figure out if you may or may not be eligible to claim tax depreciation on your investment property. But take note that this video is intended as a general guide only, and that it's best to consult with your accountant about your own situation. Ready to go? Let's do it. Firstly, I'm gonna share with you the scenarios that would disqualify you for tax depreciation. Scenario one. You purchased the property before the 9th of May 2017, but you made no attempt to rent it out from 30th of June 2017 onwards. Scenario 2. You purchased the property well before the 9th of May 2017 and you've had it available for rent but switched it to an owner-occupied property after the 30th of June 2017. If you switch back to the being an investment property, you would disqualify yourself from claiming depreciation on plant and equipment, but you would still be able to claim capital works deductions. Scenario three, you purchased the property after the 9th of May, 2017, but the property was built well before 1987. This means you wouldn't be able to claim on any capital works deductions. Scenario four, you purchased the property after the 9th of May, 2017, and there aren't any renovations or improvements made. Now, if none of these dates apply to you, then there's a good chance you can claim depreciation. So what dates qualify you for tax depreciation? Scenario one, you purchased your property well before the 9th of May, 2017, and the property is available for rent since the purchase date. Scenario two, you purchased the property either before or after the 9th of May, 2017, and the house is built after the 17th of September, 1987. Scenario three, the property you purchased is built both before or after the 17th of September, 1987, but substantial renovations have occurred either by you or other investors in the property, effectively treating your property as a brand new property as per the revised GST Act of 2003. Scenario four, the property you purchase isn't owned by an individual or a self-managed super fund. Instead, it's owned by another entity like a company or a managed fund. Scenario five, the property you purchase operates as a commercial property regardless of whether it's new or secondhand. This one's important because the 27 legislative changes only apply to residential secondhand properties, not secondhand commercial properties where you can continue to claim depreciation on plant and equipment. So there you have it. The changes in the 2017 federal budget meant that plant and equipment depreciation eligibility was affected, but not so much by capital work deductions, which make up the majority of your tax depreciation claim. 
On top of this, only residential secondhand investment properties are affected, meaning commercial property investors can disregard these changes. Provided that construction commenced after 15th of September 1987, property investors can still claim on capital works on the property. And even if the property you've purchased was constructed before this, it pays to still check with a quantity surveyor like us because these properties often undergo some type of renovation which you can claim as a tax deduction. So hopefully that's given you a better understanding of what you can potentially claim or what you can't claim since the changes in 2017. If you're still confused, it's worth consulting a quantity surveyor like us at Duotax to find out what you can claim. Duotax quantity surveyors are qualified under the tax ruling 97 25, which recognizes us as qualified tax agents in estimating construction costs for the purpose of depreciation. If you know a friend, colleague or family member who's looking to buy an apartment or a house and needs to hear this, please make sure you share this with them. If you got a lot of value out of this video, check out our YouTube channel to subscribe for more. And make sure you click on the bell icon so that you get notified on the next video. I'm Tuan Duong from Duotax. See you next time.